So this is a story of how a Korean drama brought me back to God. <laughs> it sounds uh, pretty funny when I say it out loud, but it's a true story, and it's happened quite recently to me. But before I begin, um, I just want to say that this video and pretty much all the videos I make going forward are going to be for those that maybe feel lost, um, maybe feel like they don't really know who they are anymore. Uh, maybe you're in a season of self-discovery. Maybe you have gone through a lot of changes and things are confusing. I don't know what it might be, but I'm making videos because I'm going through the same thing. Um, I'm David. I am a former entrepreneur, maybe still one, uh, founder, marketing person. I don't know. I've had a lot of lives. Worked in corporate for 10 years, did startups, did so many things, and now I'm in this season, like I said, where I'm rediscovering myself, where I'm just trying to figure things out again. And yeah, this story actually is kind of the thing that kind of set everything off. This, this story is the inception of my own self-discovery, of my own awakening, almost. And so hopefully it helps somebody else out there. Um, so this whole story starts because I got COVID about a week ago. <laughs> and this was this was my third time getting COVID. It was probably the worst bout of COVID I've had. I was like, I had a terrible headache. I had body fe fever, chills, body aches. Like I couldn't even pee standing up. I had to pee sitting down because it hurt so bad to pee. Um, and through it all, I was pretty bedridden. and I couldn't work, couldn't really do anything I wanted to do. What made things worse was we had a plan, a trip planned to New York for many months, right? We had the hotels booked, we had the our travel booked, everything was ready to go when our plans got messed up and I got COVID. And yeah, it was pretty shitty. It was because I, want, I was going to go to New York to support my best friend in his bodybuilding competition. There was so much hype. You know, I feel like I really want to support him because he's been so supportive of me and my weight loss journey and unfortunately it all kind of went to shit and so yeah that's what I had been doing for the last week um towards the end of those seven days I was sick my wife and I started a new Korean drama called Our Beloved Summer it's actually not new it's pretty old and it was my second time watching this drama and and yet I feel like it might have changed my life in a way that I didn't see coming. For those of you that don't know what this drama is about, which is probably most of you, it's about two lovers that kind of find their way back to each other. I don't want to give away too much, but in the process of finding their way back to each other, they find themselves. And the way that they do this is by confronting parts of themselves that they've been avoiding their whole lives and really understanding who they are, what they want out of life, what they love doing. And basically throughout the entire drama, there was like a through line, a question that was present almost at all times, which was, are you really doing what you want to be doing? That was a question that the characters asked each other, asked of themselves and in a weird way, as I watched every episode, I started to ask myself, am I really living the life I want to live? Am I doing what I really want to do because I wanted to do it? And when I asked myself that, the answer was kind of sad. It's that I really didn't. Like my years at corporate, my startups, entrepreneurship, being a founder, raising capital, hiring people, doing all these things, I realized I did so much of it, not because I really wanted to, but because I wanted the outcomes related to that. I wanted money. I wanted status. I wanted success. I wanted time freedom, whatever that means. I wanted all these things that were an outcome of doing these actions. And it wasn't really like this quote-unquote pure action I was doing because I really loved to do it or it brought me a lot of life or it fulfilled this part of me that 
I felt like it was really core to me. And that was sad. It was sad because it just made me reconsider my entire life pretty much. I know that's dramatic, but that's really what it felt like. It, it felt like I was all of a sudden lost. So because it begged the question, if I had been doing all these things for complex intentions, then where does that leave me? Right? What, where do I go from here? Who actually am I? What do I love doing? What do I want to do? And not only that, it's like those questions on top of the fact that I have a mortgage. What do I do with that? The fact that I have a family. The fact that I have 10 years of working experience in corporate America. What do I do now? That was a question. I felt like things were spiraling. I didn't know where to turn, where to go. And so I went back to that question of, when was the last time I felt like I did something because I really honestly wanted to do it, where there was no external validation, where there was no expectation of an outcome? I just did it because I really wanted to do it. And the last time was when I was 11 years old. I'm 32 now, so that is what, like 21 years ago? Is that right? Yeah. 21 years ago was the last time I did something because I really wanted to do it. And that thing that I did as an 11-year-old was, strangely enough, was reading the Bible. I know most 11-year-olds are probably playing video games or going outside or playing sports or doing something else, anything else other than reading the Bible. But that's what I found myself doing and just loving it. I remember like staying up late at night reading the Bible, trying to understand it. Like I could, I could tell that there was a truth beyond just the words on the page. Like there was more to it that I just didn't understand, that I just couldn't get yet and I needed to figure it out. It felt like a puzzle, like an adventure. It felt, it was, there was a thrill to it, which sounds so nerdy when I talk about it now, but as an 11 year old kid, I loved it. And so as this 32 year old lost man, I thought, should I just go back to the last thing I did out of true love? And that's, so that's what I did. I, you know, I talked to my wife about all of the things I was feeling feeling lost by because of this drama of all, of all things, um, not knowing where to go from here, not knowing what to do. And I was like, I feel like I should maybe read the Bible again just to see if there's some answers there. And she was like, that's really funny you mentioned that because I was just thinking about ordering us some. The fact is I haven't had a Bible in many, many years. I haven't read a Bible in many years. I didn't even own one. And so that day we ordered one for each of us. And the next day when it came, thank God for Amazon next day delivery, I started to read it. And here's the thing. Like I said, I was looking for answers. And the, the funny thing is I didn't find an answer, which maybe isn't all that surprising. I didn't hear from the voice of God, this is what you should do next. But what I did find was as soon as I opened the book up and I started reading it, that 11-year-old kid just came back. It was like riding a bike again. I was just in tune with trying to understand what was in front of me. All of these passages in this book, in, this, in the Bible, in the Christian Bible, they don't read like, a blog, unfortunately. They're not like a straightforward thing. There's all of this like context and culture and interpretation you need to do to kind of get below the surface. And I just started doing that. I did the same thing that I did as an 11 year old. And in a lot of ways, I feel like apart from just reading the Bible again, I was confronted with the person I am, I was. And it felt like, even though I didn't find answers, I found myself. And 
Yeah, that actually makes me a little emotional because I think maybe that's the point of all of this. Um, I've been listening to Steve Jobs' uh, commencement speech to the Stanford graduates of 2005. It's an amazing speech, super short, but one of the points he made he makes is that, or he made rather, um, was that right when Apple was kind of at its first height, he got fired from his own company. And, you know, obviously that's like a terrible thing to experience for anybody, right? Especially, you know, something that you created from the ground up. And he was talking about how, yeah, it hurt to be rejected by his own board and all these things kind of betrayed by the CEO he brought in. And he was like, despite that, despite getting fired, despite all of these things that didn't go as planned, he still loved the work. He still loved the work so much that he went on to find, found his next companies, Next Technologies and Pixar. And ultimately, his company got bought by Apple and he returned to Apple. But he was saying that it's so important to find the thing you love because no matter what happens in life, no matter what distractions, no matter what failures, rejections, anything destructive that comes, if you love the thing, you'll find your, your way, yourself back to it. And that's how I feel, kind of going back to the, this practice of reading the Bible is, it's not that I love the Bible, it's that I love the person I am reading it. And I found found that person again. And Steve Jobs in the same speech was saying like, it's kind of like finding love uh, or a person you love rather. You kind of just know. And, you know, I've done a lot of different things in my career. I can't say I find, I've found a thing I love to do, but I have found a person that I love who's my wife. And, and I think he's right about that. Like, I just knew I was going to marry this woman. I was going to be with this woman. And there was no complex analysis. There was no, you know, pro-con list. It was just this intuition, the sense of peace about that. And I think in the same way, when finding myself, when if you're rediscovering yourself, I, I'm, I'm listening to the words of Steve Jobs saying, like, don't stop searching for the thing you love because once you find it, you'll know. And in a weird way, I kind of feel like through COVID, through this Korean drama, through going back to reading the Bible, I am on in the beginning stages of finding the thing I love and the person I want to be. I don't really have any answers. Um, like I said, that's what I why I even opened the Bible in the first place. I was looking for answers. I haven't found them, but it's it feels exciting to talk about it. It feels exciting to rediscover myself. It it sound it feels like there's a thrill here. And if anything, I know, I kind of want to just keep talking about it because it feels like it's just the beginning. It feels like I'm about to go on an adventure and start to uncover a lot of things about myself. Um, my coach, actually, his name is Bezod. I was telling him about some of these recent developments and he was like, and I, and I told him like, oh man, I just like, I feel there's a ticking time bomb. I need to hurry up and figure out these things so I can move on to the next thing. And he was like, you can't speed run finding yourself. And I totally agree. I feel like I've been feeling rushed to find myself so I can hurry up and move on to the next thing. But I know that's not how it works. You know, I know that I can't just get to the end when I finished all the levels and I have all the skills and all the powers and just revel in it. But this is all a process. And so if you're also on a process of kind of self-discovery, figuring out who you are, what you're about, what you love to do, what you want to be doing, then stick around. I think we'll continue to think about things together, work through it. I feel like there's so many other lessons I have that 
are just kind of flowing from me that things I'm reading, like realizing like why certain, maybe even businesses I did didn't work, why certain relationships didn't work. And there's a lot to be uncovered and I hope we can do it together. So stay tuned. There's a lot more to come. I'm so excited about this. It feels like it's coming from that place of real love and yeah, genuineness. I don't really even care if anyone hears this because saying it out loud, I hear it myself and it's almost like giving me more reassurance. So until next time, we'll talk soon, y'all. Bye.